Hey, hey, welcome to Sketchy EBM. I'm your host, Anthony Crocco, and today we're talking about N of 1 studies. At some point or another, you may have asked yourself the question, what is the best type of research study out there? You've probably seen an evidence-based medicine pyramid before. These usually have things like expert opinion at the bottom, somewhere in the middle there are things like case control trials or randomized control trials, and then as we move to the top, usually you get systematic reviews, some by Cochrane, and then evidence-based guidelines. The major limitation of any of the studies I've mentioned so far is that at best, they just give you a probability of your patient doing well. Even if there's a 75% chance that your patient will benefit, it means that there's a 25% chance that they're not going to benefit. If only there was a study design that could tell you whether a therapy is good for the patient you have in front of you. Lucky for us, we have such a study design and it's called the N of 1 study. Let's spend a minute talking about how N of 1 studies are done. First of all, we start with the patient that we're treating. The patient has to be blinded as to which therapy they're getting at any given time. After all, we want to keep bias out of our results. Next, we randomize periods of time where the patient receives therapy A, which may be an experimental therapy or a control therapy, and we document how the patient performs on whatever metrics are important to us. We also randomize the patient to receive therapy B, which may be another control or therapeutic option, and again, measure the outcome variables we're interested in. It's important that whoever is measuring these variables is also blinded to the therapeutic option the patient is receiving. Again, we want to avoid bias in our study. After we've collated our results, we can then sort out, did the patient do better when they were getting therapy A or therapy B, and we'll know for that specific patient what is the best therapeutic option. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of the N of 1 study? Let's start off with some of the disadvantages. The first is that not all therapeutic options lend themselves well to randomization for an individual patient. As an example, you couldn't have an N of 1 study for two different approaches to an appendectomy. If you have appendicitis, you really only get one surgical kick at the can. The ideal therapeutic options have rapid onset and short duration of effect. A second challenge with N of 1 studies is ensuring that there's a clinically relevant outcome measure that you're going to look at. A third consideration is time. N of 1 studies can take weeks, if not months, to complete. A fourth challenge with N of 1 studies is that they're not really publishable, which means it's hard to learn from other people who have done them, and you're not likely to get your N of 1 study published. Academic careers are not really made on the backs of N of 1 studies. A last consideration are the types of people you have to have involved for an N of 1 study. Your patient will need to have the capacity for cooperation and compliance. Chances are you're also going to need a pharmacist who can provide you with randomized blinded samples for you to provide to your patient. By now, you're probably thinking that N of 1 studies sound like a logistical nightmare. There is, however, one good reason to do them, and that's your patient. Instead of telling a patient that a therapy probably will work for them, it allows us to tell them that this therapy does work for them. So at the end of the day, even though there are a ton of challenges doing an N of 1 study, it really is the most patient-centered research that we can perform. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Sketchy EBM. Please do take the time to evaluate, and as always, remember to draw your own conclusions.